Okay, we're back live inside theCUBE, siliconangle.tv, siliconangle.com's coverage of VMworld 2012. This is day one wrap up. I'm John Furrier, the founder of siliconangle.com, joined with my co-host all week, Dave Vellante, wikibon.org, the free research on the web. Dave, uh, wrap up, what do you think? Well, you know, it was interesting, we heard a lot about the software-defined data center and the vision and um, vSphere 5.1 and all the, all the products now. So to me, the most interesting thing was you saw that panel up there of CEOs, and that to me underscores the business angle of this whole event. You got EMC <laughs> in the driver's seat, which is just astounding to me that the storage company has emerged as potentially the most powerful company You're in the You're referring to the CEO panel yes. that was at the end of the day that yes. will be rebroadcast Sorry. on YouTube. Yes, the CEO panel at the end of the day. You had Joe Tucci up there with, uh, with uh, 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 Pat Gelsinger, the new CEO, uh, Paul Moritz, the outgoing CEO, Tom Georgian, CEO of NetApp, Michael Dell, um, you did not have John Chambers, he probably you know, offered or, or, or chose not to be there. He probably was, maybe he was, maybe he wasn't invited, I don't know, but that was kind of, I haven't heard much about Cisco at this event, but basically you've got Joe Tucci in the driver's seat, orchestrating the growth of this VMware community, everybody up playing nice, Pat Gelsinger is now you know, good, good friends with Michael Dell and everybody else, and EMC is, <laughs> As I say, sitting in the driver's seat, it's, just, it's an astounding Paul Moritz, to Paul Moritz made a comment on the CEO panel about Facebook, that the prediction that, or the trend that he sees happening this year is that VMware's market cap will be bigger than Facebook, implying the slide of Facebook and the rise of VMware. When he started to say that, I thought he was actually going to quote your line, Dave, which is that, yep. that VMware's market cap would be bigger than EMC. Well, so, well, well so we, you, you know, were on, on record of it, quoting well, that. Actually, my quote was that, that that EMC slash VMware will be the next $100 billion market cap company in the enterprise. And that's not a, that's not a layup because SAP's right there, SAP's ahead of them right now. Um, but, but EMC owns 80% of VMware, so by virtue of its ownership of VMware, if it can maintain that. But the fact is that, EMC, that VMware, VMware's value over time will far outstrip, in my opinion, EMC's. So my take on the uh, day one was obviously great, uh, great kickoff. I thought the, the, the morning session was fantastic. They had the drums out there, kind of a blue man group vibe going for it. Um, Paul Moritz came out, essentially kind of his last hurrah as CEO of VMware. He was awesome, called the king of the enterprise. Just a lot of respect from the, from the crowd. Standing ovation, and he passed the baton, the torch to Pat Gelsinger. A torch has been passed to a new generation at VMware. They're growing, they're thinking big outside this, the box of VMware, thinking about supporting other companies like Hyper-V. And really, this is the big story. VMware is now thinking bigger. To me, that was the big takeaway. Also, with Moritz and Gelsinger, the theme of old way, new way was clear. Old way being PCs and PC users, new way mobile users, that's the top of the stack. Middle of the stack where the application and the middle layer is, existing apps, to new apps and big data, and bottom at the infrastructure from servers to cloud. So huge transition to this new way, obviously another big thing, uh, the growth as well. Riding the wave of change when Gelsinger came out, that was a keynote. Obviously, Gelsinger was clearly talking about a modern era, a Hadoop era, a big data era, an era of cloud, multiple clouds. Um, he talked about all the different elements of a software-defined data center. Windows, Linux, database, mission critical, big data, HPC. And it says, he said it's time to move on, Dave. Time to move on to a new way, new experiences, and that is simply network and security, storage and availability, and compute all wrapped up with management. That is, Dave, what we've been calling data infrastructure. So, you know, EMC and VMware and their partners, they don't know it yet, but they just basically announced today a new era called data infrastructure. Abstract away the complexity, pool your resources, have them dynamically allocated, provisioned, and, and queried to uh, automation, automation and orchestration. That is really the future. To me, that's the big story. The rest is all product announcements, vCloud, a lot of slew of announcements. But at the end of the day, this is a shift to a modern era of software-defined data center, big data, and so on and so forth. And I really think, cool. And I think, John, my take on that is that um, for the last 10 years, we have seen uh, intense focus on operational efficiency, doing more with less, cutting costs, and that's what the abstraction and the pooling and now the automation is all about. Data infrastructure, in my opinion, is about a new era of productivity where you're bringing together analytic, big data analytic applications and feeding real-time transactional applications in a way that's going to drive business productivity. That's where IT spending is going to start to increase. Uh, and that's something that we haven't seen in a number of years, you know, since the Nick Carr does IT matter. 
IT has been under fire. IT with data infrastructure and big data has an opportunity to really change that dynamic and really become a new source of competitive advantage. As Tim O'Reilly says, data is the new oil. So some personal observations on my front I want to share with you just from the schedule today um, that I thought was really interesting was, uh, one was this, you know, the disruption around Flash. We had some Flash startups on. We had also a great interview with HP, which I thought was really enlightening because HP in the data center area around servers and networking is actually really kicking ass. And they don't get a lot of credit for that. So, you know, I've been really critical of HP over the years and they still got some problems at the top that they're working through. Obviously Meg Whitman's leading the charge. He's got a transition team. The executives at HP at the top have to become technically proficient. To me, uh, you know, I'm really a big fan of Meg Whitman and the, and the changes over there, but to me, H, the HP story, Dave, is pretty clear. They're turning the ship around, they're taking their medicine, $8 billion write-off. Um, I heard from people inside the company today that they're taking their, their big uh, severance packages by August 31st, everyone's going to be transitioning out of the first wave. But the management at the top of HP, including their board, have to be tech savvy. Okay, and I think Pat Gelsinger at the helm of VMware, that's an observation I would say is going to be in the benefit of VMware. Other observation was how uh, VMware was going to play out the Nasira acquisition. So on the heels of the billion dollar payout they paid for a, basically an unknown startup doing some cutting edge work called software defined networking, Nasira has emerged to be the, cor the, the cornerstone of their strategy which is software data center. So I thought that was cool. And that speaks to the bold moves, Dave, that they're making. So to me that was key. Obviously, on a, on a fun note, David Flynn, um, CEO of Fusion IO, great to see that guy pumping. They had a great quarter. Um, we've been following them. We've been covering them since they were a private company. Now they're going public. He is smiling. He's got a spring in his step because there was a ton of naysayers that were nixing that whole vision of Flash as a caching layer. He's obviously got that market. He nailed it, went public, created a lot of wealth for everyone. And he's got competition. We've got violin memory systems right here in our backyard knocking on the door, and you got everyone jumping in there. So, a lot of action, Dave, a ton of action. And then finally, the CEO panel that I watched was fun. Pat Gelsinger was dominant, his CUBE experience showing. I thought, I thought Georgians looked a little bit nervous. Michael Dell looked like he was eager to get a word in, like, like trying to get, get, a, get a word in and be relevant. And, and I, you can see it in his eyes that Michael Dell wants to make a statement um, to, to tell the world that he's back. Dell is not toast. And uh, it's clear from Dell's aggressiveness in that panel, Dave, that he is absolutely not going to take it lying down of uh, people saying that Dell is a done company. So great. And obviously, Tucci, the, the general, the old man sitting back there, the old proud CEO orchestrating the whole thing. Fun to watch. Well, talking Mana made the case for Dell. It was very passionate, impassioned case for Dell today. A lot of cash, uh, a lot of upside in his opinion. Uh, you know, Dell's clearly got some, some challenges, but I've said you know, a number of times on theCUBE, Dell is dangerous, right? It's got cash, it is, uh, it, it is filling out its, its IP portfolio, and it, uh, it could do some damage. I also wanted to mention, John, you know, I think that while I love VMware, I love the fact that the practitioners are just really so passionate about VMware, there's some real challenges here. There was a statement made in theCUBE today, false summit. I likened, you know, the, we, we hear about the, the figure that 60% of applications are now virtualized of applications running on x86 are now virtualized. Uh, somebody said, is that a false summit? You know, you're climbing a mountain, you, th you think you're at the top. You know, getting to 90%, which is what Pal Kelsinger put forth, is, is going to be really a challenge. Um, first of all, to get virtual, you need to buy physical. So there's this weird dynamic going on in the marketplace where you've got to bring in more physical to get to virtual. So that's, gonna, that's a tough hurdle to, to go over. Plus, I think there's a lot of application owners out there that are still, still skeptical on virtualization. And then third, I think there's some competition, right? I think the VRAM pricing debacle opened up the door for Microsoft. Windows Server 12, uh, getting a lot of, 2012, getting a lot of early reviews. IBM's making another big push in virtualization. Um, people aren't lying down, so uh, you know, they're not just, the world, the comp competitive industry is not just going to let VMware run away with it. So I think the next five years are going to really be challenging. And I think that's why Gelsinger talked about the cadence of a, soft, a major software release every single year. 
like the cadence of Moore's Law new microprocessor release every It's year. almost as if Pat Gelsinger read my blog post um, <laughs> about the apps, because that's one of the things that we, we highlighted was the fact that he could bring that application acceleration, and that is a Moore's Law-like vibe, but at an application layer. So if he can do that and figure that out, I think he'll fill on top of the, uh, on top of the VMware ecosystem. And, and make that a, make VMware a, a truly an enabling infrastructure. So right now, I just don't see them there yet. They dominate the enterprise, but they are not truly an enabling in, in, uh, in platform right now, fully. So they have, they're, they're, they're okay, they're not fully there yet. Um, things that I learned today, uh, talking to folks, I, uh, on, a, on a kind of a learning note, I connected the dots between something I've been thinking about for some time, and that is the value of Apple Computer. Apple is the, is the most valuable corporation in the world right now. And I connected a dot on the Tarkin Maynard interview where the epiphany was, Dell's trying to figure out the services business. He mentioned the size of that market being billions of dollars. And I think the Apple story is interesting. If you look at the success of Apple Computer, and as Wall Street tries to figure out, can that stock go any further, I would say the following. Apple has only had 8% of the market share in the PC business, 8%. And they're crushing it financially. Can you imagine, with the success of these products, mm. if they go double digit market share on the hardware, what that will do to their earnings? So what that means is, and the dot that I connected was, well first of all, I think that absolutely I was, it's a buy for Apple stock, that they will smash through their earnings. I think they're gonna go to 15% share, maybe 20, and that's gonna create even more of trillions of dollars of value. But the connected dots was that the Dells and the HPs of the world can be the Apple of the enterprise if they keep their hardware business. Don't give up on the hardware business, even though it doesn't look good right now, and figure out how to wrap around that like what Apple did with iTunes and all the services. So I think Dell, HP, IBM, and even VMware, if they can kind of get in that, that mode of wrapping around it, Dave, I think that's something that I learned. So today. John, um, Apple's market cap is over 600 billion now. 600 billion, okay? Uh, and, and the IT market is probably what, a billion, two, billion six, something like that? So <laughs> Apple's market cap is more than a third of the total value of the IT business. That's an astounding figure. Uh, with 8% market share in, in hardware. Can you imagine if they get to 20% consumers? So um, again, a little small little, little dot that I connected that's make, gonna, gonna make me think more about some of the strategies that these guys are thinking around IT because if it is true that the consumerization of IT, meaning the experience of working at a company is gonna be like a consumer experience, if that is the trend, which I believe it is, then we're gonna see more Apple-like business models. And I just don't see that right now from any major player out there. I can't point to one company and saying, those guys are kicking serious ass like Apple is on the consumer side, relative to hardware, user experience, and wrapping revenue generating services around it. IT is ripe, I mean, they got all kinds of transformations, as Simon Crosby talked about, security, and a new way of doing things. So I think there's a lot of disruption going on. I think Joe Tucci's absolutely correct. The big Disruption's happening faster than ever before, so it's exciting. You know, the other thing I, I point out, uh, two years ago we talked about the theme, and, and the, we talked about the gap widening between cloud service providers and IT. And I have to give props to VMware and you know, IT practitioners in general. They have, I don't want to say necessarily closed that gap, but they've certainly uh, plugged the holes in their organizations. You know, most IT organizations are on a path, they're on a journey. You know, the marketing led the actual implementation, but. IT organizations are doing a pretty good job of building their own internal clouds. You know, people call them private clouds. Things are getting simpler, and so um, I think that you know, hats off to those IT organizations. Um, they're still not there in terms of self-service, in terms of chargebacks and the like, but um, I think there's light at the end of the tunnel for the, the IT folks that we talked to. Well, let's wrap up day one. It was a great day. Obviously a modern era in, the, in, in computing, as we called it, the data infrastructure obviously is relevant. We're going to continue to pound on that all week. Obviously big data as well, Dave, is continuing to go. Tomorrow we got Pat Gelsinger, first thing in the morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, other notable names, Chad Sackett, we got the CEO of VCE, Jay Shree, the CEO of Arista, 
who I'm curious to find out what she thinks about the whole software defined data center since they're doing some cutting edge work. Ping Lee from Excel Partners, and uh, we're going to have a VC startup panel right after that with EMC Ventures and possibly True Ventures and some other startups. So, so uh, that's our lineup for tomorrow. That's a wrap from day one here in the Hang Space in San Francisco, VMworld 2012. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's exclusive continuous coverage of VMworld day one. And that's a wrap. We'll see you tomorrow morning.